Hi, this is the fellow passenger speaking, and today we are going to take a look at the new TFP Coin Max for Live device, which is, well, I'm going to label it as a two stage randomizer. It may not make sense now, but it will do very shortly. We're just going to take a little sneak peek of what's to come. All right, thank you for still being there. I'm going to do my best to try to explain the concept behind this Max for Live device. It's actually really simple to use and hopefully simple to understand too, but it's difficult to label it. I think that's probably the trickiest part. So let me try explain through these images. If you would use um, an expression control set to random, or if you would have an LFO with some sample and hold waveform running through, you get noise and because it's completely randomized. So if we look at this image at the top, you get something like this. The noise is evenly spread. So let's say you have set a range between zero and 100 and you run the expression control. It's just as likely you get 99 as you would get two, followed by 99, followed by two. You don't get a clustered spread like the image below. This type of noise has got a name which I cannot remember. So if you do know it, please write in the comments or if you just want to write to me, that's absolutely fine too. But basically it spits out the random number, but the random number is more likely to be somewhere in the center. It can be anywhere in this square, but the further away, the less likely it is it's going to end up there. And I would like to achieve this and to try to explain what that means in terms of sound, I would like to reference this old techno track, Crispy Bacon, where if you haven't heard it before, just check it out on YouTube or on Spotify or whatever. It's got, it's very um, basic in a way. And I think what he did, he just did it by hand, assumption here, but the track has got uh, a bass line and the filter is fairly closed. It's sort of bubbling a little bit, fluctuating, but every so often it, the filter opens up and so does the envelope and you get these stabs. Uh, so, which sounds to my ears that that is random, whether it's done by hand or not, I don't know. And as the track moves on, those random stabs happen more often. The filter is opening up a bit more often. And that's the effect I would like to achieve rather than just having it randomly open and close um, for equal, equal amount, so to say. So that made me think about this Eurorack module by Mutable Instruments called Branches. It consists of two identical, what should we call them, functions. It's almost like two little modules in one. How this works is that you send a trigger signal into the input this device will toss a coin and depending on which side comes up, that trigger input will either come out of A or out of B. So you can send the signal into different places. And depending on how you turn this knob, you change how likely it's going to be an A and how likely it's going to be a B. So the further to the left, of course, if you have it all the way to the left, it's always going to come out of A and vice versa. I liked that idea. This one only passes a trigger signal through rather than actually sending out a random value. So I have made a device that has combined all of these things. So hence the two stage randomization. So I've made this little device here. Let's go into Ableton again. That does exactly like the mutable instrument branches. It takes a MIDI note to trigger this. So if I press a MIDI note, Let's just turn that down for a moment. So if I um, press a key, now it's set to 50%. It's equal chance that it will either end up on the left side or a right hand side. And if I turn that all the way to the left, now you can see it's only happening on the left hand side. And then as I turn this up, the right hand side is becoming more and more likely. So that's the first stage of the randomization. So then let's say we do the left-hand side here. So it picks the left, it randomizes, picks the left-hand side. 
then it does a randomization again between these two values and equally on the other side of these two values you can set them to whatever you want so it generates a value between this and then whatever you have mapped this to and passed it on to there um yeah it's really really simple so if i just to illustrate the crispy bacon thing i've set something up here it's going to be the worst rendition of well it's not really crispy bacon it's just sort of i suppose alluding to it to just explain how this works if i map this to this macro knob i've just basically taken an analog um, standard instrument in ableton and taken the frequency and i've also taken the decay and release and connected that to the macro so i'm just going to set this quite low we probably don't want it quite zero but we can do something like that so it's going most often fire fire around these values but occasionally it's going to do we set it quite high it's going to open up the filter in the envelope so if i just start pressing a key now we can hear the result oh no i should of course turn the value volume back up again Oop. oh actually i've set up a little sequence here And the more I, I'm going to turn this up now, and you, you will hear that those stabs will happen more often the, the higher I turn that up. Another place where this is interesting to use is let's add another one and we turn we do a similar setup to this but do the first one here quite low uh, and we set it to maybe so it's most likely to end up on the left hand side and we turn this up quite high and then we can map that to the send that sends this off to a reverb i used to do this technique quite a lot using the expression control but then it's completely random so you can get lots of reverb uh, or very little reverb or it's just going to be an even spread but by doing this you can change change the bias so it's going to not be very likely but not completely impossible that occasionally it's going to send off to the reverb Then we can do the same thing with um, the delay. Um, maybe we can do, I don't know, just. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. It's a very simple device, but I also think that you, even though you're introducing random elements into your music, you get a little bit more control. And I hope you like this video. And if you do, and you feel like you can part with a small sum of money, you should check out my Patreon page because you will be able to get this device along with loads of other devices that I have released for my other videos. You're only committing to a month at a time. It is very affordable. It's um, four British pounds a month or whatever that converts to in your currency, which could be, I have no clue anymore because the pound is losing value. So it should be cheaper for you, I suspect, if you are not using that currency. If you want to support me in a different way, please check out my merch store. There will be a link in the description to that as well. Um, also like and subscribe and that's going to be super helpful when making um, generative music i also got an an online live session that i have recorded well it's it's a live performance that i have recorded myself but it's going to be broadcast through ned rush channel i don't know the exact date 
keeping my fingers crossed um, that it's going to be successful and I will let you know here when I when I know more. All right, thank you so much for sticking with it and watching this video and see you next week, I'm trying to post something um, every week if I can. So thank you very much, goodbye.